Hey guys, hope you're all well. Welcome to my channel. My name is Attic and I'll be going through the top 10 features of the new Mavic Mini Pro. So come along. Now, yes, this is slightly different to the usual videos I post of cinematic content, but I was really excited about the Mini 3 Pro and I wanted to tell you which features I cannot wait to use. So this list isn't really in any order, but uh, I'll start with the camera sensor. Now, this is probably one of the biggest upgrades over the Mini 2 where the Mini 2 came with a 1 over 2 thirds sensor and the Mini 3 Pro comes with a 1 over 1 thirds sensor which I believe is around two times bigger. So for you and me this means that it'll perform much better in low light as compared to the Mini 2 as well as giving more dynamic range to the shots so better quality in essence. The pixels have been enlarged to 2.4 UM pixels. I'm not sure what they were before but I've read that they, they're larger than the Mini 2s. The aperture also got some love with going from 2.4 to 1.7 which means that it will let in more light into the sensor and again this with the bigger sensor is going to give us hopefully a lot more better shots and more quality more clarity in our shots so I can't wait for that. So the second thing I'm really excited about is the active track in the quick shots because I film solo 90% of the time 95% of the time and this will help me get those shots of myself in my travels without the remote in my hand, which really doesn't look cinematic. And I will also be using the quick shots to get nice automated shots here and there. Mostly I'll be doing manual, but it comes in handy. So number three is the 60 degrees rotation of the gimbal, not the vertical shots that DJI are calling true vertical. This is the rotation of the gimbal up and down, which now goes upwards to 60 degrees, whereas before it was around 20, 25 degrees. And this will allow for things like hero shots and shots much lower to the ground, looking upwards and making it more cinematic. So I'm really looking forward to using that feature. And it also gives you the greater panning ability. So if there are tall buildings or mountains and you wanna capture the whole thing, it will give you another tool to help. Next on the list is the Cine like which retains a lot more dynamic range and allows for greater maneuverability during the editing phase where you can bring back more detail in the shadows and the highlights because more details have been captured. Now along with that the next feature on the list is the 150 megabits recording which again allows for a lot more data and detail to be captured in the files so in the editing process there'll be a lot more data available to you. Next up we have 4k 60 frames per second and although this is not a very big deal for me in terms of slow motion as I mainly do landscape shots where there's no really need maybe if I'm filming boats or people running and stuff I might use it for that slow motion but my main reason for putting this feature in the list is the smoothness it can give fast moving shots at 60 frames for following cars or waterfalls and things like that so um yeah again it's not a big change but i'm really looking forward to it next on the list is the actual upgraded remote that comes with one of the packages now you can get the drone by itself without any remotes you can get the drone with the rcn1 which is the same one that came with the mini 2 which is a great remote and I was really considering getting it with that remote but I really wanted to try the RC and have the freedom not to worry about charging my phone or connecting wires or batteries running out or people calling me during filming etc which have all happened in the past and have ruined my thought process so so I'm looking forward to this because I've never used a RC Pro or RC Plus before from DJI. This is the first one with a built-in screen that I'm looking forward to and I really miss the dedicated photo button that I had on my Mavic Pro and when I got the Mini 2 I was really annoyed that they took that away. So yeah I'm really looking forward to this new RC. Now I've heard somewhere that this Android system that they have on this remote they have locked it to just be on the DJI Fly app and, also, and the settings that's it you can't install other apps or instagram or anything like that which is a big shame because they allow it on the rc pro and it's nice to be able to take your shots and then post it straight away without having to transfer files anywhere or do anything else where it's just it's an all-in-one package 
But again, the main reason I'm getting it is because it will make my life easier when I'm traveling and I'm filming and there's no extra things to worry about when I'm mid-flight. Now this one is quite a big one for me because the system for the ND filters on the Mini 2 were very, very irritating and very fiddly. You have to turn the gimbal downwards, then make sure the two hooks from the filter were going into the vents behind the camera and sometimes it wouldn't go in properly or it was just really fiddly, especially, especially when the weather was cold and my fingers were numb. It was very, very difficult. So I'm really glad I've seen the images of the filters that DJI are doing and it looks like it's magnetic and I'm really hoping it is. I didn't order the ND filters from DJI because they only come in 16, 64 and 256 and, and I'd rarely ever need a 64, let alone a 256 ND. So I'm going to wait for people like Skyread or Freewell to come out with their own versions and get ones which have like 8, 16, 32, maybe 64. That's as much as I need to go. Now, the next one is the battery redesign, which is an, again, a, another pet peeve of mine. Now there are two clips, one on each side, and there's no flap. So it, it will be much easier to just press the two buttons on the side and pull out the battery. Whereas before on the Mini 2, it was really cumbersome trying to press the release mechanism with such little space. And last on the list is the obstacle avoidance sensors, which has been one of my biggest things that I've been wanting DJI to put into a Mini 2 since the Mini first came out because I used to love it on my Mavic Pro and it used to give me such peace of mind knowing that the drone is better protected. Not completely because it's only got sensors on the front, back and bottom. There are no sensors on the side but you can't have it all. I do wish though that instead of putting the sensors on the back maybe they could have put it on the sides because I enjoy filming side to side a lot more than reverse shots and when I do reverse shots it's usually after I've done a forward shot so I know that there's no obstacles behind me as such and with the side moving shots it's very hard to gauge how far you're going and such. So yeah overall I'm really really glad that DJI have put the sensors in there but I really wish they had sensors on the side. Maybe on the Mini 4 Pro eh? Let me know in the comments which features you're looking forward to the most. So that was my list of 10 features that I'm really looking forward to using when my one arrives. And yes, I've ordered my Mini 3 Pro. I got the one with the RC and the Fly More Kit as well. I ordered that because I always need extra batteries when I'm flying. And let me know if you're ordering one down in the comments and which package you will be getting. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing as it helps the smaller channels to be acknowledged by YouTube. And uh, going forward, I'll be making more videos like this as well as my cinematic videos as I love showcasing all the places I go to. So those won't stop, but I'll be doing more videos like this. If you have any suggestions on where you'd like me to visit, whether in the UK or any other countries, please let me know in the comments. I'm looking for ideas on where to go over the next year or so. So please let me know if you have any ideas or if you have any preferences. And till next time, stay safe and stay creative.